I think that rather than waiting, waiting for this kind of collective awakening, it's really something that we need to all be working on uh, all the time, doing such socially awkward things as talking to climate change, talking about climate change with a stranger or someone you just met or bringing up the topic. You know, someone says, oh gosh, it's hot today. And you say, yes, well, we are living in a warming world. You know, like, you're not supposed to say that, right? It's not, you make people uncomfortable, but realizing that, well, maybe we're, they're gonna be uncomfortable. I'm a psychologist. I earned my PhD in clinical psychology a year ago. And during my training, I started to get more and more alarmed about climate change and more involved in research and thinking about solutions. And my, my basic question was, what is happening in people's minds and in our kind of collective social life that this crisis is happening, this absolutely tremendous, horrific crisis is happening, but people are basically living their lives as normal. I mean, doing things like planning for retirement and living life, imagining a future that is totally unrelated to the actual future we're heading towards. How is it that denial and other defenses, such as dissociation, are keeping people so out of touch and how personal it is? I mean, the idea that climate change is going to affect me. I started to think after Sandy, I thought, okay, I'll, I'll write about climate change. I already like to write, I'll write about the psychology of climate change. And I published an article on the internet and I was getting ready to start a blog. Um, and a good friend of mine said to me, don't start a blog, discourse isn't enough. Think, what could you do that could actually solve this problem, okay? And that challenge literally blew my mind. It grabbed me in a way that nothing in my life has ever grabbed me. And I started investigating, just reading as much as I could about the history of social movements, the psychology of denial, climate change itself as a phenomenon, the existing climate movement, etc. And what came out of all of that was this strategy of the pledge to mobilize. That was really the shift that really changed my life, is the idea of like, what could you do to solve climate change? There's a few of us left. Another 4%. I think we can do it. 4% reduction in greenhouse gases. Brilliant. The idea that humanity needs to unite behind the goal of rapid transition to carbon neutrality is it's it's just harder for us to get. So the pledge to mobilize really is again in answer to this kind of quandary that says here's what we need to do. It's a call for making transitioning to carbon neutrality in energy and agricultural systems as I mean all of our systems our top political and social priority try and issue that challenge to, to every American and everyone living, right? Like, we need to solve this. So what can you do? What, what community can you organize? Who can you spread this to? What skills do you have? This is a theoretical way in which we could solve climate change. If, if enough people take this pledge and demand that the government mobilize our economy and society, and then we do, we have a shot. We are in danger, and that's the most important thing. The pledge provides a structure for engaging around climate change so that people can talk to their friends and family about the crisis with an action step, right? With an ask. You can say, I'm, 
I'm very concerned about climate change. I recently got involved with this group, the Climate Mobilization. I took this pledge. Uh, you know, I'd like to talk to you about it. What do you think? Do you what are your, what are your concerns? You know, have you uh, somebody somebody might say, oh, this is way overblown, and you say, oh, well, that's interesting. Like, might you read this uh, this article from you know NASA or whatever? We talk about a solution the size of the problem, that you need to have that kind of heroic, whole society, whole scale effort. We need a rapid, as rapid as possible, transition off fossil fuels and off carbon intensive agriculture that absolutely requires every citizen, every university, every business, every politician and political arm. Now that we have this international version, everyone in the world, a direct way to say, this is what I demand, this is what is necessary. And the main um, mode of action is spreading that to others. It becomes really easy to imagine how we could solve climate change because you just have to get into this mindset of like total mobilization. If people feel helpless against this absolutely catastrophic threat, it kind of makes sense that they would say just like, nope, I'm not gonna go there, I'm gonna screen it out because it makes me feel terrible and there's nothing I can do anyway. So the pledge to mobilize is really like a direct confrontation to that. I would highlight what I think is a very key element and that is agency, right? The feeling that I can make a difference. Today, our culture says you are living for you, for your pleasure, your fulfillment, your greatness, you, you, you. And the thing is, it's actually not very enjoyable to live that way. It's not fulfilling, it's not purposeful, it feels pretty empty and that to, to live with a sense of purpose, whether it's a national purpose, which is what we need for climate change, or a personal purpose, uh, is, or the combination of the two, is better. When we started spreading the pledge to mobilize, which was at the People's Climate March, which was a, such, a, such an exciting experience because we had about eight or something, people with us, and we had t-shirts, and we said, can I talk to you about the climate mobilization? Can I talk to you about the climate mobilization? And it was great because it was such a positive spirit, and the vast majority of people said, this sounds awesome, cool, where do I sign up? and shift its weight with a howl inside. Costly change was made in the name of a stable so that's the first lesson from the social movements of history is just that movements work very effectively. There's no reason to be discouraged or to set kind of weak or small goals. Go go big. I mean, we, we need it and it happens through history. Another, I think, critical lesson from social movement history is about the value of truth and how truth is communicated. And to me, to get at the cr truth of climate change, you have to talk about the fact that it threatens to cause the collapse of civilization. Not just all the symptoms, you know, sea level rise, droughts, storms, tropical diseases, all this stuff. It's not enough to just talk about the symptoms. We need to talk about that this, these all add up to failed states. I mean, just the breakdown of what, what we have built collectively. I think it's necessary to go through a period of, of overwhelm and maybe shutting down. I mean, climate change is overwhelming. So, like, it's, I don't know, I don't, I don't think we need to protect people from the emotional impact of climate change, but rather, again, help them see, get, get through it to, to say as clearly as possible, here is what you can do. And that when that happens, when someone makes that kind of transformation from basically passive on climate to like fiercely active, that is, that is the fuel for a social movement.